All right, everyone, we're doing something a little bit different today that we haven't gotten to do in a while, and that was actually go to the thrift shops. And uh, we got something really interesting today. The real interesting part that we found today was an old Hewlett Packard. And uh, yeah, this thing is uh, this thing's old. So judging by the turbo button that's on the front here, I'm guessing it is from around uh, 386, 486 gen. So I'm really excited about this. I've wanted to do something with a 486. So that's what we're gonna do today. So when I found this, it came in a big giant box that had a bunch of other uh, instruction manuals and uh, software, so I'm actually pretty excited. So we got the actual user's guide. Um, action, navigator, software tool works. Like we got all of the documentation here. It's fantastic. 46 ES personal computer. So. Yeah, it looks like uh, this has a 46 SX2 in it. Um, and then we also have a Windows 95 product uh, product guide here. So I'm hoping that there's a actual installation, a win installation media for Windows 95 in this box. I would be pretty dang stoked. Um, it doesn't look like the hard drive or DVD or CD drive are actually included on this machine. Thankfully, I uh, have spares. Then it also came with a bunch of three and a half inch floppies. So um, let's see here. We've got MS MS DOS 6.2 setup disks. <laughs> let's go. Uh, Microsoft Windows Workgroups 3.11. Then we got a whole nother box of uh, floppy disks here. And it looks like this has a lot of stuff on it here. So we got Microsoft Money. Entertainment pack for Windows, Cirrus Logic VGA drivers and utilities for Windows. That's awesome because this thing has a built in Cirrus Logic uh, video controller. Action 2.5, uh, Sound 16A drivers. So, does this have a Sound Blaster 16 in it? That's amazing. Oh my gosh, Prodigy. Prodigy Internet, yes! MS DOS boot disk, Microsoft Video. Quattro Pro for Windows, Workgroup Edition. Yeah, so the rest of this is all word perfect. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. We've got all of the original, like, purchase day stuff here. Got service tags, um, certificate of authenticity for Microsoft Windows, and DOS 6.22. Well, let's go ahead and get this sucker opened up so we can actually see what we're working with. So there's two screws on the back here and here. And that keeps the entire uh, top of the shell on the unit and it should just slide off once we get those unscrewed. And so now we can just slide this forward and it pops right off. And it pops right off. It pops right off. There, there we go. There, there we go. I got it. I got this, guys. I got this. But anyway, um, I can tell you right now, no hard drive and no CD drive. Um, as I speculated before, I'm um, going to go ahead and remove this crossbar so we can take a look at what the ISA cards are. So we have an ISA riser card here that splits one to four slots. Um, looks like we have a dial-up modem here and here, so this was obviously used for work groups. And then we have this ribbon cable um, running into the, it looks like the sound card. So I'm going to go ahead and take out these ribbon cables real quick just so we can actually see more of what we're working with and they are single slotted ribbon cables they're not they're not double and here we have a slot for a five and a quarter inch drive so one of the things you want to be aware of on these old 486s is the batteries can leak and destroy the motherboard so this one has some corrosion on it but it doesn't look like it's hit the board i'm gonna go ahead and pull out these uh, isa cards so we can easily get to that battery so first up we have a dial-up modem Oh yeah, look at this guy. Got jumpers. And next up we have the sound card. So it is not a Sound Blaster 16. It's um, some Packer Bell branded crystal audio chip. 
Um, looks like it has just your standard um, audio jacks, then game port slash MIDI port right here. And yeah. So here's a closer look at that battery. As you can see, there is tons of corrosion that has started to come out of this thing. Again, none of it seems to have affected the board yet, but we're going to go ahead and get this sucker cut out right now. So I've got some wire cutters. I'm just going to cut the leads on this guy. Um, it's not one that is heavily soldered into the board, so just clipping these leads should allow me to remove it and get the board sterilized and cleaned off. So I've now taken the time to clean the entire board. We have the 486SX 50 megahertz, 4 megs of RAM with another 4 megs built onto the motherboard, uh, front panel connector, and this is where I'm going to put this new 8 gig Seagate hard drive. And it just, this is a cool mounting system. It just slides in here and latches to the front, and then you just do one screw to lock the whole thing into place. Next, I'm going to put in the new CD drive that I found in a previous thrift store visit. I didn't know why I bought a CD drive, but hey, I'm glad I did now. I'm gonna get the floppy drive screwed back in. I had to take it out to put the CD drive in. And now I'm gonna go ahead and get all of the ribbon cables reconnected. And I was a little, uh, I was a little um, taken aback by the fact that there were no plastic molds around the ribbon cables. This is a much older board. I'm not used to this anymore. Usually when I deal with IDE, it has alignment guides to let you know which side you need to put it in on. And this one, I need to make sure that I'm putting the things in the right pins, and I need to make sure that pin one is lined up to the red cord. And if you don't get it right, it's obviously not going to work. I'm going to go ahead and put this ribbon cable into the CD drive for the moment. I'm going to move it over to the hard drive later. I just don't want to have the cord um, going in the way of the ISA cards when I get that installed. So now that I've got that taken care of, I'm going to go ahead and get the power supply put back into this case. It has this long uh, plastic thing um, for the power button on the front of the case. All the power is handled directly through the power supply. So like I mentioned earlier about the IDE, you need to make sure that you have pin 1 lined up right, and for whatever reason I decided not to double check that I had gotten this IDE cord in right the first time, so I needed to pull it out and swap it around. Next I'm going to get all of the power resupplied to the board, so first we're going to plug in the AT power connectors, like so. Then we're going to put our Molex power into the hard drive. DVD drive, and last but certainly not least, the floppy drive. Now I'm going to put the ISA riser back in, got this guy cleaned up a bit, and I'm not going to bother putting the modem back in, I'm only going to put back in the sound card and add the modem to my ever-growing collection of spare modems. So I went ahead and got the hard drive connected to the primary ribbon cable and the case put back together. But before we go any further, I'm going to make sure that this computer will boot. It doesn't have a battery for the CMOS at the moment, so we will get errors to be expected, but I don't want to waste the money and the time ordering this stuff if the computer itself won't boot. Thankfully, it looks like it's going to boot just fine, so we are going to go ahead and order a new battery and get back to this video then. So it's been about a week and I got my new rechargeable batteries from eBay and I got that soldered in. Well, it's actually removable, so I made a removable one. So if it ever dies again, I could just pull out the battery and put a new one into a couple of wires I soldered into the battery slots. But let's go ahead and talk about some of the problems I encountered trying to get Windows 95 installed because this was its own little bit of a beast here. So the first issue I had was with the hard drive. No matter how I set it up, even if it was set up properly, it would not work with anything over a gig, even though the BIOS could detect things up to 8 gigs. So this 8 gig hard drive should have worked just fine, but for whatever reason, if it was above 1 gig, it just would not let me even boot into the MS-DOS install. I couldn't run FDisk. Nothing would work. So I had to use a new another program called OnTrack that I got from Phil's computer lab. Thank you so much, Phil. Uh, for supplying that software uh, for such an older operating system. Thank you for hosting that. The next issue I encountered was the CD drive. And it turns out that the IDE controllers on that CD drive were proprietary. I didn't even think about that uh, when I hooked the CD drive up. So I had to go and find a new ribbon cable 
to allow a secondary channel to hook into the motherboard to get the CD-ROM drive to even be recognized. The last major issue I came across was once again the hard drive. I've had issues with this drive on previous builds. I was just really hoping it would work on this one. It's a great size for this type of machine, but unfortunately that drive was just done. So I ended up taking a 15 gig drive out of an old compact and replacing it with that and was able to get Windows 95 up and running without any further issues using the full 15 gig partition and FAT32. After getting Windows installed, I went ahead and got all the drivers installed for both Windows and DOS, and then I decided to run some benchmarks on this machine that I got from Phil's Computer Lab once again. Phil has a wonderful benchmarking pack for DOS, makes everything very easy, it's all in a very easy, simple to use menu. So once again, thank you Phil for making so many awesome things available to those of us that are into the retro computing scene. And yes, everybody, the turbo button does exactly what it's supposed to and slows the CPU down to work with older AT compatible software. Surprisingly enough, the CPU is being detected about as fast as a DX2 50 megahertz, but since it lacks that math coprocessor, I know it's going to be a lot slower in actual games, but it's nice to see that this CPU really isn't as terrible as I was expecting. And thankfully, all of my RAM is working. I know it's only 8 megs, but it's good to know that it is working. And thankfully, the hard drive that I replaced into this machine is very fast. This benchmark still took forever to finish, but I was, uh, I was happy to see that I didn't put in a very sluggish drive. So it's mostly, it's most likely a lot faster than the hard drive that originally came with this machine back when it was brand new. Next up, I decided to run the 3D benchmarks just to see how capable the built-in Cirrus Logic 5424 really was. It has 512 kilobytes of RAM, and you know, it's it's not the best, but it's a lot better than I was expecting. We got 30.3 FPS in this benchmark, and then in the PC player benchmark, we got 6.9 whole FPS, so really not good. It's it's yeah it look at it it's amazing um but again it is an integrated video card i didn't really expect much out of this maybe when i upgrade the machine i'll add more ram to it see if it helps this out any but you know it is what it is so finally i decided to run the doom time demo because who can benchmark a dos computer and not run the doom time demo and honestly i was a little bit impressed i wasn't expecting it to run even this fast, yeah, I know this is slow, but I mean, come on, I've beaten the 3DO port of Doom, so in comparison, this is still about twice as fast as that, so I was, I was impressed. Even though it was slow, it was very smooth, and, you know, after a couple of upgrades, I'm sure this machine is going to be able to run this game flawlessly. So there you have it, the fully rebuilt Packard Bell 486. This is going to be an awesome machine to do projects on. I'm looking forward to upgrading this guy further in the future once I get a little bit more cash together to get the parts I want to put into it. So look forward to that video. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that like, dislike button, and don't forget to subscribe. And as for me, I am going to go enjoy this computer for what it does best, and that is play old point-and-click adventure games like King's Quest V. Have a good one.
If I see her, I'll let her know you're looking for her. I would appreciate that. Well, I guess I'd better get back to looking for her. I'm not ever going to find her just sitting around here. Thanks for your concern.